Jacqueline Millar is the Plymouth Food Access Project Director and the co-founder of TerraCura Inc., a Massachusetts nonprofit bringing together innovative designers and environmental educators in the fields of architecture and permaculture. Julie Thompson spoke to Jackie about her work and passion. Jackie, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, for people who don't understand, what exactly is permaculture? So permaculture has three tenets. It's land care, people care, fair share. And that really just means working with nature instead of working against nature. As a good permaculturalist, you should be able to have more hammock time, which means your ecosystem works within itself. Okay, so put that again in, in words that um, <laughs> people that don't even understand what that definition meant sure. means. So permaculture really means if you were going to have a little permaculture site at your own house, mm -hmm. which I do, you want an organic garden, you want a compost system, and you want a rain barrel. Those are really the three things that are going to work within your system itself to be able to produce food on your property. You want to be a producer rather than a consumer if you can. And if you can't, then when you go to the supermarket or if you go to buy food, you want to buy it as locally as possible with the least packaging as possible. Your impact on the earth has to be very light. Okay. And that's what we try to we try to promote with permaculture. Okay, that 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 makes perfect sense. Now, <laughs> clearly it depends on where you live and, and the type of um, you know, if you live in an apartment building, can you can you participate in this? Sure. So you can participate in lots of different ways. You can certainly have a compost system in an apartment with vermiculture, which is meaning you have a worm bin that eats all your food scraps. You can have any type of container garden too. So you can produce some of your own food in your apartment as well. Or if you have a deck or a patio, any type of planter out there is going to give you the ability to produce something, either herbs or maybe some vegetables, something like that. You just want to have your food source as close as you can to yourself. Okay. And what about during the winter months where you can't really grow anything outside? Is, can you move most of this inside? Some of it you can. So a lot of people are using grow lights for various things. They're using hydroponics as well. So you just have to think every day from the minute you get up the time you go to bed, what's the best use of your time in order to help the environment and help the world? And help yourself health-wise too, correct? Of course. Absolutely. Right. Local's the best way, right? Right. Absolutely. Now, how did, how did, what is your background and how did you get into this? Because this is very unique and interesting. So I grew up in North Adams, which is the western part of the state. And growing up, I just thought this is the way everybody lived. I lived with my grandmother and my mom and my dad. And my grandmother would say, can you go up to Blueberry Hill? We need some blueberries to make something. So, of course, we trudged off to Blueberry Hill with our little metal bucket. And that's what we did in our free time. We would go to places and gather things that were local. We had two apple trees in our backyard, and that kept me close to my food system as well. So we'd make pies from our apple trees. So for me, your food system was just something that happened to be in my backyard or up the hill. So as I kind of came into the permaculture world, that to me just made perfect sense. Working with nature is the only way we really are going to be able to move forward, you know, in our day to day lives in order to save the planet. And so you had the advantage of growing up in that environment with, with that, yes. that was just became that just part of how you lived. Right. What do you say to people who, who their entire life, it's all prepackaged everything? How do you break that cycle that is really no one's fault? That's, that's just how you were brought right. up to make them understand right. how important and, and what an impact it can make if they change, even a little. Right. So for me, the local food system is probably number one. So if you have a farmer's market, that's your goal is to go to the farmer's market because then the number of miles your food is traveling is so much less than in a, an industrial commercial food system. Also, when you're tasting things, if you get a tomato from Florida or from Canada or from wherever, you know that taste isn't the same as something local. So once you start to kind of attune your senses to eating local food, that's going to make all the difference in your day-to-day -day life, just tasting, eating, and having things that are local is going to make a huge difference in what you're going to do every day and eating yummy food that tastes like something instead of cardboard. Right, right. Now, how do we, how do we educate um, the youngest of the young, um, and, and do we do this in schools 
to try mm -hmm. to get people to be on that path right from the beginning. Right, so one of the goals of Terra Cura is to have a school garden at every school in Plymouth. So we do have a lovely school garden at all the schools. Some of them we installed, some of them were there. And then what we do is educate kids by having them come out to the garden, not to be afraid to taste, smell, and just grab the food and feel very comfortable knowing that's the local food system, right? If you have a garden outside of a school, that's as local as you can get. And then having some of that produce be brought into the food service. So Patrick Banca is the food service director for the town of Plymouth Public Schools. And he's embraced this concept with the tomato sauce initiative. So we are able to gather tomatoes from the school gardens, bring in basil and oregano, and he makes a tomato sauce for the district and that we serve once a year. And that gets kids thinking about from start to finish, from seed to harvesting and to eating it. And that's the key because right. I think kids are really the change makers, right? Oh, absolutely. They're the ones who really want to embrace this type of work. And they're very worried about the environment. Yeah, yeah they are. And and. We will, we're kind of asking them to be the ambassadors to bring that thought process home, maybe, right. and maybe even help educate their parents on how they can make little little differences. Um, right, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's excellent. Now, can you suggest some good um, resources that people can go to to, I want to start this. I've never done this before, and I, I want to do this. Where do I start? Sure, you know, you can Google permaculture. It's going to tell you a whole body of work about it but it's really doing things on your own property. So for me, a rain barrel is really important, capturing rainwater that you can use for your garden or for other uses as well. And those rain barrels you can get, there's a company called the Great American Rain Barrel Company, and it's a food grade container that they repurpose into a rain barrel. So you can kind of advocate for your city or town to have a program, which is wonderful, or you can just order one. But you know, I think Morrison's, um, Bagway is a wonderful resource. You can buy one there. Mm -hmm. so, and then a compost system too. Compost systems are great. And so all your food scraps or any type of leaves or things like that can go into your compost system. And that's, I made mine with pallets that you see on the side of the road. So anything you see that you could reuse, grab it and bring it home and turn it into something else. So for me, an organic garden, a rain barrel, and a compost system are probably the three most important things you can do on your own property. So let's just talk about that for one second. Um, you know how the, all the cities and towns now a, a lot have trash pickup, they have recycling pickup. So yeah. we're all used yeah. to, okay, we're, we're recycling now. Do you foresee a day where this process is part of something that our local municipalities support also? And how might that happen? That's a good question. You know, you have to advocate all the way, you know, to get these things in place. There are different organizations that do curbside pickup for composting and that you just put out your organic food scraps and then you can either get um, compost back, they'll deliver it back to you. So there's different organizations that do that, which would be wonderful. So Black Earth Composting is one of them. I think there is some talk about having that come to Plymouth. So you just advocate for these things. And it's a groundswell of people who want to do the right thing. Right. But you have to, when you go to a store, you have to really be mindful of what you're buying and where it came from. You really need a pineapple in January. If you bought a pineapple in January, you know, the amount of energy it's taken to get from Hawaii here, is that worth it? Right. It probably doesn't even taste that great by the time you eat it anyways. And even the packaging as well. We use... K cups, you know, the K cups, the yeah. single serving coffee. We use those to start seeds. And I think that's a wonderful visual for kids to understand that everything that comes into your, you know, what you buy or what you use, you can reuse it. Right. So yogurt cups, K cups, reuse them and start seeds from them. And that gives them kind of a different perspective because we need to tread a little bit more lightly on the earth yeah. instead of just be consumers all the time and throw things away because right. it's crushing the world. Right. So this is all connected in the great circle of life. It, it just, it just, yeah. it's just a really important part of that that hasn't gotten the attention probably that it deserves. This has been great. I could talk to you for for hours. This is this is absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Um, thank you so much, and we'll put all the information on the screen as to how people can get more information. Um, sure. And I appreciate your time today, and I'm energized. I'm excited. Good. This is good. Great. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Jackie and Julie.
If you've enjoyed this video by The Local Scene, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.